Russia and Ukraine war and its impact on trade internationally. Have you had any projections on our supplies um, for basic items like flour, cooking oil and so on? And has there been of any concern to you? Not more than you would have had because the people who are handling that they spoke publicly, um, uh, we, we are looking at the um, source and um, the international market for products that we sell and that we buy. It's not the best market to be in at this time. Um, it appears as though there could be shortages, so we have to prepare ourselves. Um, recently, I saw the head of the Supermarket Association giving a very detailed um, and, and uh, educational discourse as to what components of our diets would be affected by the availability or lack thereof and when it's available, the price at which those products, because externally, the price of a lot of our common food items, the price is forced up by these external circumstances, not the least of which is the war in Europe. I, I, I never thought that I would have been seeing a war in Europe in my lifetime. I'm seeing one going on continuously. And we are an importing nation where unfortunately, unfortunately, we import a lot of our diet by choice. The nature of our diet, we believe that an apple is better than a pom city. We believe that flour is better than breadfruit. I remember when I just became prime minister, I mentioned that we should consume more cassava. And I was wrongly criticized by some people. I, I don't know why someone thought that that was something that I should not have said. Because, I mean, you know, if you go to the back of the Prime Minister's residence, there's cassava there, planted there by me. Right? The largest bunch of silk fig I've seen, and I grew up with silk fig, the largest bunch I've ever seen was in a tree at the back there that I planted. I still have peas in my fridge from my peas crop at the back of the yard. And what I'm saying is this. We can do some more here. And we should, and we must, and the government's policy is that we should. Because availability and price may be, may be beyond our control. And there's no, it's not going to change by saying the government this and the government that. Some of these things are well beyond the reach or the influence of the government. The oils and fats and flour and grain and animal feed. Right? You eat a lot of chicken. But the chicken that we eat here, they raise an imported feed. So these are the links we need to know. And those people who misinform the population, they don't help you. you know. they, they put you in a position to want to blame somebody. But you'd be better off if you understand it. Then you might know that there are some things that you might be able to do to ameliorate the effects of these things upon you and your family. And I would like to encourage the population to pay attention to the outside world because we are in that outside world as purchasers of their products. Thank you very much for coming and I want to say that the media, I thanked everybody, but I want to thank the media for the work that you've done for the two year period. Most of the times you've got it right, all the time you've communicated with the public and a well informed public is a public that is better able to perform well during a pandemic. Thank you all very much for staying the course. Thank you. Thank you.